Hey guys, looks like it's beer 30. Let's go see what's in the fridge today. Hey everybody, thanks for stopping by Greg's Beer Reviews. Today, today's beer <clears throat> comes from Springhouse Brewing Company. These guys are out of land, no, it says Conestoga, Pennsylvania. I thought the can has something else on it. British Springhouse, it says Lancaster, Pennsylvania on the can. Uh, Conestoga and Lancaster must be pretty close together. Uh, not sure, I don't live in Pennsylvania. And this was sent to me by my brother in craft beer, Rico. Uh, and this is a $2.25 can of beer. And on the bottom of it, it does say Can Don 12, 7 of 16. So this is a 2016, at the end of 2016, because they put the month, day, and the year on there. Thumbs up to Springhouse for doing that. They did not have to. And, but I do appreciate these guys, uh, uh, these breweries that put the Can Don in bottled on date, even on these stouts. Uh, that's the information we want to know, guys. So that is absolutely wonderful. Two thumbs up to the guys at Springhouse for this. And this is a peanut butter uh, stout. So uh, not probably not something I'd want to drink every day, but a nice change up from your typical stouts. Uh, Enrico sent a note here with this one. said uh, 8.3 Imperial Stout brewed with two types of chocolate malt, roe, raw cocoa nibs, rich peanut butter, then aged on whole vanilla beans and more raw cocoa nibs. And it says he bought it at the beer stores and it's sold in Sixers. So uh, whenever you see these big beers like this that are sold in Sixers and not four packs, uh, that's a good thing uh, usually. I mean they're not trying to gouge you and charge you the same price for four of these that you typically probably can get this beer for and a six pack. So whenever you get two of those free, yeah, that's a good thing. So, uh, and it's got 275 on this. I doubt if you're gonna pay that much if you're buying the whole six pack. Might be, might be wrong on that, but I would say you're gonna get the six pack cheaper than 225 per pop if you're buying the whole six pack. When they start popping them out of the rings there and putting them on the shelf individually, sometimes they charge a little bit more for the individual than you can buy a whole six pack for, or even a four pack. <clears throat> so, and right before I get started on this beer, I will tell you during my research before the beer review here today, uh, Rape Beer has this beer at 8.5%, which is wrong, which is incorrect. And Beer Advocate has it at 8% even, which is wrong. So both of these sites got the wrong information. So they've probably done this beer several different years, and these these bits of information from these two sites are from previous beer releases. This one does have 8.3 on the can. So both the information you're getting from Rank Beer and Beer Advocate on this is incorrect. Untapped has it listed as a 2016 version and it has the right 8.3. But we don't have the IBUs listed for it anywhere. So let's get on with this. Uh, Commercial description on this one says, creamy, malty, and full-bodied, the big, gruesome stout is scary good. The intense, roasty flavors come from two types of chocolate malt and raw cocoa nibs. The stout is then aged on whole vanilla beans and more raw cocoa nibs to enhance the chocolate flavors. Rich peanut butter is introduced throughout the entire brewing process to make this stout even more gruesome here in the... Here is the... Description. Description. So, uh, don't think there's anything else we need to talk about. So, let me pop the cap on this bad boy, and I will tell you food pairing and cheeses of buttery Briga, Gouda, Havarti, Swiss, goes well with your chocolate dishes, of course. Digestive. 
Uh, meat is beef, smoked meat, game, and grilled meat. Glass brought a pint back and tumbler snifter, oversized wine glass. I got my favorite snifter, the Sovereign Beer Glass. Ooh, nice carbonation on this beer. Look at that head. Yeah, that's what she said. All right, and this here can be solid for long periods of time in the proper conditions. Look at that. Good looking beer. Two fingers of head on that. Not a lot of light coming through the uh, bottom of the glass. Pretty dark beer. Well, very impressive head. And once again, mm, yeah, that's what she said. Let's get a nose on it. Big roasted malt. Hence of peanut butter in there. There is some chocolate going on, some bittersweet chocolate. And the bubbles are uh, bursting fairly rapidly. And it's uh, down just a little bit more than a finger of head now already. Don't think the head's going to last a long time. Smells pretty good. Let's dive in and see what we got. Cheers, everybody. Cheers, Rico. Wonderful aroma. Peanut butter is there, guys. A little on the thin side for an 8, uh, 8.3 percenter. But whatever, it's exactly what the can is telling you it is. It is a chocolate. I'm getting that. Peanut butter stout. I'm getting the peanut butter. The cocoa nibs there. I'm getting that chocolate, that bittersweet chocolate. I'm just thinking about the lactose added to this beer. As you can see, the head is dissipated completely already. It is a little on the thin side, guys. I will say that. Right now, right out of the fridge, that, that is my only derogatory comment. That it is on the thin, watery side for an 8.3 percenter. But it's got the chocolate, it's got the roasted malt, it's got the peanut butter in it. So, let's sip on it for a while, let her taste it, and see where it ends up being. And uh, I'll be right back and we'll do that final chug thing. Alright guys, I'm back. Got just a little left here. Uh... In my humble opinion, they probably need to introduce a little bit of oats to the beer to give it just a little bit creamier mouthfeel than what I'm getting. It's very thin and kind of watery, and the other half said exactly the same thing. I've said, yes, it is. I agree with that. So, uh, it doesn't have the peanut butter influence that maybe a Sweet Baby Jesus from DeClaw has or maybe even a Liquid Bliss from Terrapin has. But the peanut butter is there. Uh, I just wish it had a, just a little bit better mouthfeel than what I'm getting on this. It is very thin and watery for an 8.3% stout. So, but still kind of delicious and I do applaud them for putting a canned on date on the beer. Two thumbs up to those guys for it. For doing that and not jumping to that best buy, enjoyed by, used by crap. So, final chug. Very nice aroma now that it's warmed up. I get the peanut butter on the nose now. <sighs> Wonderful aroma. Very tasty beer, guys. I don't think it's outstanding or world class. A good example of an entry level peanut butter stout, in my opinion. But there are some better ones out there, uh, brewed with a little bit more kick to it as far as peanut butter influence and a little creamier mouthfeel on top of that. So, to me, guys, uh, 
I'm going to give it to 8, which is the A minus. Numeric rating for me would be a 90. Uh, over to Beer Advocate, they say 91. So we're damn close there on the numbers. And over to Rate Beer, Rate Beer, Rate Beer is a little generous. They got 96 overall, but only 59 in its style. And our final check in, we will go over to Untapped, and they have it at 4.02 which is in their A category also, the lower end of their A category, so. A beer. Uh, this was, uh, it had a little bit better mouthfeel. That's my only really fuss about it. Uh, the peanut butter is there, but it's had a little more subdued than some of the others that I've had, so. Uh, just wish uh, it had a, just a little bit better mouthfeel. So, if you've had this one from uh, Springhouse Brewing, this is a big, gruesome uh, chocolate peanut butter stout. Uh, let me know what you think, guys. Come on back tomorrow. Let's take something tasty out of the fridge. See you then.